everybody! It's me, Carmine Stefano, the Bookman. And I have just got back here in my studio, if you will, from seeing Les Miserables the movie. And first I'll give you a little bit of a background story. I have been a Les Miserables Broadway nut job since I saw Les Miserables live on Broadway back when I was about 19, 18 years old. And I mean, I used to put in the original Broadway soundtrack that I had on CD on my stereo and sing every male part throughout every day, every single afternoon, right on time. I had my strict regimen. I know that musical in and out, up and down, like you can't even imagine. And on top of that, we've been waiting a long time. We saw the Phantom of the Opera movie, which I thought was very underrated. And back then, it was about three, four years ago, we were saying, man, if they could do Phantom of the Opera, why can't they do Les Mis? In terms of the music, Andrew Lloyd Webber I'm a huge fan of, and I love Family Opera's music better, but Les Miserables is a little bit more gripping, a little bit more intense, um, gets a little bit more here, in, a, in, a, in you, and a little bit more here, out of you. So, I always thought that Les Miserables would have translated to the movie a little bit better than Phantom. Hey, look, there's the phone. I wonder who that could be. But, I never... But, I never was sure if they would ever do it. And then we found out that they were doing it, and you had the cast that you figured would be the cast. Hugh Jackman as Valjean. Uh, you know, Anne Hathaway as Fontaine. I mean, what more could you ask for, you know? So we were looking forward to this for months. And then we saw that on YouTube, they actually had one-minute sp spots from the movie itself. And we were nuts. For like a month, we were watching these one-minute spots, so we couldn't wait. So we, we set it on the day after Christmas. We got the tickets. We, we pre-ordered the tickets. We get to the movie theater yesterday, the day after Christmas. It was yesterday, as I'm recording this. And we're sitting there in the movie theater. We see the opening. We get 10 minutes into the movie. We see a flash of light. The screen goes black. And we have to evacuate. We don't know why, but we have to evacuate. So I said, no, fuck this. We're seeing it tomorrow, which is now today. And now that I've seen it, I want to see it tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and so on and so forth. This is, without a doubt, one of the most intense, emotional movies you will ever see. Every single member of the cast pulled off their part as well as you could possibly pull off their part. Hugh Jackman was astronomical. Anne Hathaway was phenomenal. Even Amanda Seyfried, who I know is just ridiculously hot. I just never thought she can actually sing Cosette's part. Cosette's very high. And she hit those notes easily. The, the young woman that played Epony, Samantha Barks, who actually did it on the West End London Theater. See, I know these things. She was really great. The, um, the guy that played Marius was great. Androlas. Although Androlas, they made, they made it a little bit more like the book in the sense that Marius and Androlas were more you know, dual-headed figures of this, like, movement, this resistance, as opposed to the original show, they made Marius kind of like a weak character. You know, he was always just fluttering off, looking for Cosette and what have you. In the book, he was more of a, more of a, a stern, upfront leader. And in this, they really played into the whole, without Cosette, I don't care if I live anymore angle. They, every aspect, even freaking... Uh, the Ali G show guy, Sasha Baham Cohen, whatever his name is, even him, who I'm not a fan of at all, I thought was great as Tanadier, you know, the master of the house. And I mean, everybody, everybody won me over. And they had Kamal Wilkinson, for those of you that don't know, as the Monsignor in the beginning of the movie. Now, for those of you that are as into the play as I am, you will notice there are a lot of omissions, there are a lot of quicks. You know, quick spots, they, they, they cut songs up a little bit, they move things out here and put things in there, but they really mixed it up well. Another person I was uh, pleasantly surprised by was um, Russell Crowe as Javert. I remember Javert as Terrence Mann, you know, and of course Terrence Mann had held every line, you know, I can find out the truth, I know they wait, but they were, you know, like everything was like drawn out and there. So, um... Russell Crowe wasn't like that. He wasn't as dynamic and explosive, but he, he held his own. I mean, they all held their own. They all did great jobs, 
And they focused on the people that you had to focus on. Like I said, Hugh Jackman was sick. I could not imagine you can hold a note while you're tearing up a piece of paper. For those of you that know the show, the part when he does, you know, the, the Jean Valjean is nothing more, another story must begin. You know, like he, he was like tearing up the letter before he, the, the yellow paper of, uh, of leave before he starts singing it. And this, he's tearing it up as he's still holding on. Begin! You know, he's holding on this note and he's tearing up this piece of paper. And he did it, you know. There was a part in I Dreamed the Dream when Anne Hathaway looked like she was going to collapse and she still held her note. I mean, you have to understand that every last song that was sung in this movie was sung live. They didn't pre-record anything. So it was all live. And it was great. It was just incredible. They, they looked for an epic. They looked to make a timeless epic. And they did. They pulled it off. And the reason why was because the producer was the producer of the play originally. The writers were the writers of the play originally. You really got a, a, a great grasp of everything that they wanted you to grasp. The new song suddenly that they added was really, really nice and really held together the two, the two main acts. It was just how they did uh, One Day More, I thought was, was great. How they were able to keep up all that madness. If anyone knows the show, you know that One Day More is everybody's part. You know, it's, it's, the, it's the interlude, it's the intermission. It separates the first act from the second act, and you have the intermission because the show itself is about three hours long. And in Broadway, you get to get up out of your seat and everything after the first act and before the second act. That was, they did everything. They even did the end without making it too hokey. I mean, it was, just, it was perfect. It was perfect. So, for anyone that knows Les Miserables, if you're really, now I nitpick everything. I nitpick everything. I know you probably don't think so, you know, because of, so many different things that I've talked about that a lot of people hate that I love, but I really nitpick everything, especially my musicals. I am a hard ass when it comes to my musicals. I have nothing bad to say about this movie. I really don't. If you don't, I know that every movie nowadays is an adaptation. I mean, for Christ's sakes, they're making a prequel to The Wizard of Fucking Oz, okay? And it's a tornado in Kansas. What, that happens twice? Like, really? People are going to start jumping into tornadoes, hoping they're going to go to Oz pretty soon. You know, they're, they're doing prequels and sequels and remakes and all this shit. The Star Trek movie was supposed to be a prequel to the original Star Trek show, and now they're making another Star Trek movie, so now basically they made a prequel to their own new Star Trek. So, you know, like, they just redo everything, and although this is an adaptation of a play, it's something that, need to, that had to have been made. I'm glad it was made, and I think I'm going to go order tickets again to go tomorrow. I know I'm definitely going in the next few days. I might even be going tomorrow again, because it's that great. And I got my soundtrack in my car. So, go see Les Mis immediately. Guys, you want to make the woman that you're with feel like you're really sensitive? Take her to see this. She'll be bawling too much. This is the new test. If you can get through this Les Miserables movie without crying your eyes out, you passed. I barely passed by the skin of my ass. Let me see if any of you can do that. Now, thank you all for watching. I have more for you soon to come. So stay tuned, take care, and have a great... Yeah.